Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to stamp a floral patterned vellum card, and I'm going to use the Misty to do it, and I want to show you how to kind of make all the little floral pieces meet up with each other. So it's a stamp set from W Plus 9, it's a sympathy set, and who doesn't need a sympathy card when you're not sad? So make one of these while you're not sad, so that it doesn't break your heart when you're making one because you need it put it in your stash and be ready to go. I took a piece of scratch paper first and I just taped it down in the middle of the Misty because I'm gonna use it basically for a template to follow along with the rest of the, the piece of vellum that I'm gonna use. So I have that one down and I'm just gonna randomly, wherever, you know, pick a, pick a place to start with the stamping and just throw the, the stamping on there. Now I'm using Distress Oxide ink and this is the peacock feathers after doing this i probably would recommend something that's going to dry faster than this because you'll see as i go there's a little bit of issues with it um, kind of making a little bit of a mess but it came out still good enough in the area that the card's going to be that i used it anyway but for each one of these now i can turn this and kind of figure out exactly where i want it to line up with the next flowers um, and just start to fill in the places. Don't leave yourself little tiny areas to fill in unless you have a little leaf or a little tiny flower that you're going to use to fill in that spot. If you want a full all over pattern, then try to make these things take up as much of that space as possible and leave yourself decent shapes that you can find one of the edges of this stamp to tuck into it. And I let some of them overlap each other just a little bit. Some of the outside solid leaves can overlap because they can look like they're in front. That'll work just fine. But the thing that has started to happen here that you may be able to see is that when I press it down, I'm getting a little bit of pressure. So I'm picking up some ink on the, the uh, clear acetate, not clear acetate, the uh, acrylic. Yes, on the acrylic. And so I had to keep wiping that off. And it did make slight smushies on the vellum, but it was very slight. And with the way that I'm going to use it, you're not going to be able to really tell. Nobody's going to care. So I'm just going to continue working my way all the way around the card or around the piece. Notice that I've made it a really big piece of vellum so I could have lots of areas to choose from. So if you smush one area, you can still just move it around and choose which section that you want to do this with on your card. You could also make one that's a double piece and then just cut it in half and get two cards out of it while you're doing all this stamping. But you want to leave yourself room to stamp over the edges outside of it so that you can get that that all over pattern. If you're using Distress Oxide, let it dry. I let it dry actually overnight because I wanted to do this pencil work. So I took a Prismacolor pencil, this is number 992, and I just started putting color in where there were not these white flowers because these are lilies, and I also didn't fill in the leaves. You could fill in the leaves in green and have another color in here, but I'm doing it on the ink side, which is why I made sure that it was getting dry before I started doing this. And it, it's going to, when you look through it on the other side, you're not gonna be able to see any scribbly pencil lines or anything, so don't stress out about your coloring. Just fill in some color so you have some difference in it. I'm using some Be Creative tape now across the top and I've trimmed my vellum piece uh, horizontally, so I have a top edge that I was happy with. And there's that little corner there that didn't get colored, but I'm going to cut that off anyway, so I'm not worried about that. And I'm just going to place it on top of here. And don't worry, I'm going to cover up where that Be Creative tape is. Now, you can barely see it, so you might not worry about that. For, but for people who say, oh my goodness, I can see the tape through it, I have a solution for you, because I have a really cool thing I'm going to do with a piece of ribbon. But first, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. So I'm going to use some embossing powder. That was my embossing buddy thing, tool de-staticker, so that my powder doesn't stick to things. And then stamp it with some Versam Versamark ink, which is a clear ink. If you don't know what embossing is, that's going to get be sticky and pick up the the powder in just a minute. I also have a Versamark pen and I took the edges of that word prayers and extended it off the edge of the card. And now I'll put my Hero Arts white embossing powder on it, flick off the excess, and then I'm letting the heat gun warm up first. And you need this to be really hot before you take it to the vellum because it's gonna curl. 
Vellum doesn't really get thrilled about curling, especially if you use normal weight, if you have really heavy stuff, maybe. But I like to use the lighter stuff because I don't use vellum enough to, to buy the really expensive heavyweight stuff. But it works really easy to just put two little pieces in the corners down here and it'll hold that down nice and flat. It's also going to dry flatter, but it was still somewhat warm after the, uh, the embossing. So I've put a piece of half inch Be Creative tape now across the top. And I have a piece of ribbon cut that I wanted to use. Now you could just make it flat across the top. But I'm going to show you how to make a knot that's going to go through the Postal Service without being a lumpy. So stay tuned here. I'm, I'm kind of trying to make sure I glue this the sides of it down first and then make them join kind of in the middle because that's where I'm going to put my little knot. And I'm going to twist them in such a way, and you need to practice which way you're going to, to tie it because I had to do like the opposite. I had to take that one in my, that one on the left hand that I'm tucking underneath and pull that one through. Normally I tie my knots the other way, but you want that one on the top left to not look like it's kind of flailing because then you don't need any adhesive to hold this thing down. Once you have that adhesive across the whole front, it's going to stay just fine. And it looks kind of like a knot, even though it's not, it hasn't been knotted. So it's not bulky. It's not thick that way. So give that a try. And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click that like button and go make yourself a beautiful sympathy card today while you're not needing one. And then you'll have it later when you do need one. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.